As we transition into the new year of 2025, I feel led to share something weighing on my heart. A message that connects scripture, scripture spiritual reality, and a call to action. Let's begin with the foundational scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. This verse is a profound truth about spiritual identity and authority. It reminds us that a genuine confession of Christ's Lordship can only come through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. This reality underscores the urgency of the spiritual battle we are in. Now consider this. As of 2023, the world's population is 8.2 billion and approximately 2.38 billion, about 30%, identify as Christians. At first glance, this seems significant. Yet Jesus warns us in Matthew 7, 13, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. This contrast is sobering. Despite 30% the world professing Christianity, Jesus foretells that only a few will enter the kingdom of heaven. The Greek word for few suggests an almost insignificant number compared to the whole. The implications are staggering. Many who claim faith will not make it because their walk lacks true surrender, obedience, and transformation. Let's dwell deeper with another critical passage. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. This scripture cuts to the heart of the matter. It is not enough to do the work of the kingdom, prophesy, deliverance, and miracles if our hearts are far from God. Even those empowered by the Spirit to perform great works may hear Jesus say, I never knew you. Here's why this is urgent. Time is short. God is calling us to get serious about our spiritual lives, to let go of the things that entangle us, and to walk in obedience. Merely attending church, serving in ministries, or receiving applause for spiritual accomplishments does not guarantee our place in the kingdom. Jesus left us three crucial prayers that should shape our focus. Number one, pray for more laborers. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Out of the 30% of Christians worldwide, not all are laborers. Many are nominal believers, lacking authentic engagement in God's work. Pray that God raises genuine laborers with heart, fully surrendered to Him, and consider if you are ready to step into this crucial role. Number two, pray that your flight is not in the winter. Winter symbolizes a season of barrenness and finality. Metaphorically, this means praying that we are prepared for Christ's return before the great falling away, some say rapture, our judgment is unleashed. This is not a time for complacency, but vigilance and readiness. Number three, pray to escape wrath and stand worthy before Christ. Pray fervently that you will be counted worthy to escape God's coming judgment. This worthiness is not about works, but the purity of your heart, motives, and obedience to his voice. Let me emphasize this. Being in church, performing spiritual acts, or even being used by God does not mean you are spiritually strong or secure. The enemy knows how to exploit double lives, masquerades, and hidden sin. During one deliverance, a demon exposed those in the room saying, some of you love sin. You won't escape hell because you're filthy inside. The devil's accusations may be cruel, but sometimes they expose the truth. So I urge you to let your private life reflect your perfect persona. God weighs our hearts, not our performance. Seek his approval, not applause. It's not about how many miracles you perform, but how much of Christ people see in you. Finally, let's not forget the urgency of the hour. The Bible says only a few will enter heaven. Out of the billions, the number will seem insignificant. Make sure your name is in that number by living a life fully surrendered to God. Stop chasing the temporary wealth, fame, and accolades, and start pursuing God's kingdom. Only what we do for Christ will last. Philippians 4, 11 through 13 says, With godliness comes great contentment and great gain. See him first, find contentment in him, and everything else will fall into place. <laughs>